Good morning. This is Mr. Riggins with ACCA and Apple a Day. This morning, we're going to read a book about a safe place, which hopefully everyone is in right now. And the name of this book is Sally's Room. Late one morning, as Sally got ready for school, she stepped on a stegosaurus. Then she stepped on a triceratops. She couldn't find her colored pencils and she couldn't find her favorite sweater. Sally left the house that morning in a very bad mood. Sally's room was in a bad mood too. The lamp spoke up. What are you laughing at? It glared at the, gold, the globe. You've got your socks on your head, <laughs> explained the globe. You've both got socks on your heads, said a clock with no batteries. Never mind that, yelled the chair. Look at me. Who could sit on me? I'm stuffed. I'm going under. Ick, said a fishbowl that was badly needed scrubbing. Yuck, said half a peanut butter sandwich. That's nothing, said the bureau. Just look at that bed. Wow, Sally's room is quite a mess. Do any of your rooms look like this? Everybody looked at the bed. Now the bed began to squirm. What's wrong with me? I'm very comfortable the way I am. Sort of, said the bed. Some checkers fell out and almost a complete jigsaw puzzle fell out. How can you possibly be comfortable, they yelled, with crowns and dinosaurs and scratchy doll clothes all mixed up in your sheets. Come to think of it, the bed said, I could use a little house cleaning. We all could, stated the globe. Exactly, said the clock. It's time for a change. Let's go find Sally right now, they all shouted. Let's tell her just how we feel. Sally's messy room marched out the door and down the street through the center of town, past the corner market, past the library, past the fire station, and up the long driveway to the school. People almost fainted when they saw it. Even dogs and cats ran away fast. At the school, the custodian got excited and fell into a bush. The principal screamed. Squeezing through the front door was not easy, but Sally's room was determined. It got in. Down the hall and up the stairs it went, looking for Sally. The teacher, Miss Locati, had just asked the class, what is the capital of Brazil? Sally knew the answer was Brasilia, and she raised her hand. Miss Licati called on another person, and that's when Sally saw something familiar in the hallway. It was a lamp passing by, a lamp with socks hanging down. It looked like her lamp and her socks. Sally's face turned white as a sheet, which was fluttered by necks. Oh, said Sally. Oh, said Miss Lacati when the door burst open and an unmade bed fell in. Wow, said the whole class when a bureau crashed in on top of the bed and a lamp came next and play money and plastic horses bounced all over the floor. Miss Lacati stayed cool. People, she said, please take your seats. As you can see, we have a problem here. And then she asks in a clear, calm voice, just whose messy room is this? A couple of kids raised their hands, thinking it was their room. But it was Sally who stood up and said, it's mine. It's my room and I like it that way. I know where everything is. So Sally's room wasn't the only one that was messy. Yes, said the lamp. 
It's your room, but you can't ever find anything. I can too, answered Sally. You couldn't find your sweater this morning, said the fishbowl. The globe said, you couldn't find your colored pencils and you needed them for your map of South America. Now, Sally didn't know what to do. She stared out the window. Wait a second, said the clock. Look at Sally's desk. What a surprise. Sally's desk was very tidy. Her marker, pens, workbooks, ruler, and pencils were all arranged carefully. Her lunch was in the drawer. There were no candy wrappers anywhere. I don't get it, said the lamp. How come at school people can be very neat and know where everything goes, but at home they throw things around? That's a good question, said Miss Licati. Luckily for Sally, the bell rang just then, and Sally rushed out the door. Her room rushed out, too, but got hung up in the hallways. Then it got stuck in afternoon traffic. Sally arrived home first. She ran up the stairs, opened the door, and of course, there was nothing there. Gosh, she said, what a big space. I could draw huge pictures in here. I could have all my friends over. I could even dance in here. Sally began to twirl and spin, graceful as a swan. She was a famous ballerina in a beautiful dress, dancing on stage in front of everyone she knew. Until her room barged through the door and spread out all over the place. And that was when Sally got a great idea all by herself. Okay, she said, it is time for a change. I have important things to do. I need more room in this room. The first thing Sally did was find a large box for toys and clothes to give them away. She packed them carefully so that other children would like them. This game was fun when I was little, Sally thought, but now it's boring. Then she picked up all the underwear, socks, pajamas, shirts, shorts, skirts, pants, dresses, and blouses that needed washing. They went into a big laundry bag, and now she could see the floor again. Sally cleaned the fish bowl and fed the fish, and they liked it. She arranged her horses and dolls on a shelf where she could admire them. She put her art supplies in one place so she could make drawings or clay monsters whenever she wanted. The books went into the bookcase and she gave the clock a battery. She made the bed and that's when she found her colored pencils. That's when she found her favorite sweater. As Sally put each thing away, the room began to feel big again. It was a place where anything could happen especially dancing. When it was time for bed, Sally snuggled in her clean, soft sheets. She was tired. I still don't have a light bulb, said the lamp. Oh, well, answered the globe. Nobody's perfect. Sally fell asleep that night in a very good mood. Thank you all, and I hope you are all in a safe place, a safe, clean place.